The entire set 9.5 has been leaked thanks to our beautiful friends in China. We love China. They have all my heart and 50% of my power. That is not what we're talking about in today's video. That is, in fact, what we're talking about today, the leaks. And it's hard to know, is this a leak? Is this a reveal? And we have some, uh, a, little bit of, a little bit of stuff talking about that. Might be a little bit of drama because look down here, Tanner is the one who uh, reviewed or revealed this. Cute words, Tanner. Shout out to him. He uh, releases a lot of content, a lot of English content about the Chinese server. Big shout out to this guy. Make sure and check him out on Twitter if you guys want to know what's going on in China, TFT esports, and that sort of thing. Great information for that stuff. It says, uh, it, Kenya asks right here, Hey Tanner, were you asked to do an official set 9.5 reveal? I'm trying to ascertain whether this thread is a leak or spoiler or legit reveal. And he said that his NDA expired. Uh, yesterday at 4 p.m., which means everything was revealed in China at that moment, which is interesting. When I read that, I was like, that's kind of weird. They do a different reveal for China uh, than they do for the West, considering that the internet is a thing that exists. Of course, this would be ruin the reveal over here. And then Mortdog is calling these things leaks. Um, he's calling them leaks. So maybe a little bit of drama with that. I don't know. But anyways, Mortdog, he hates leaks. But we, the consumer, we love them. I love them. It gives me stuff to talk about. So here we are uh, talking about the leaks. And uh, we are not going to be talking about this slide, the items, because I already talked Ignosium in two separate videos. You can watch either of those. I'll have them linked at the end of the video. Um, uh, one where I really talk about this slide, I'll link that one uh, in the end card. Um, yeah, you can check that one out. So we won't be checking out that slide, but we'll be going through pretty much all the other slides here. Um, and then the big one, the big one we'll be looking at is this one. This is the one that's most important for us. And we actually have some gameplay playtest videos on Billy Billy. Uh, maybe we'll live stream watching those if there's if the these are like full games. We'll watch these, we'll game review these, live stream on Twitch. Check out my Twitch channel, guys. Um, nobody watches my Twitch stream. Everyone's just here on YouTube. Please come to watch my Twitch stream. I would like to have- ah, ah. Ah. Yes. God, it feels good to be a winner. Uh, people there, it'd be amazing, but I appreciate you guys anyways. But uh, I'll upload, uh, if this is some good footage and I'll upload these reviews onto YouTube as well. All right, let's talk about the big slide. This is what we came here for. And I'm just gonna call out the traits um, and then we'll go through them one by one. So we have Bastion. Uh, so a lot of these are returning, some of these are new. So Bastion, Challenger, Sork, Bruiser, Gunner. And there's some changes to the Gunner line here. Invokers, Juggernaut, Vanquisher, Multicaster, Rogue, Slayer, Strategist, Empress, and Techno Genius. Uh, something that you'll notice that is gone is Deadeye. Uh, but Aphelios is still in the set. He is not a Deadeye. He is a gunner now. Deadeye was a terrible trait, and it's great that it's gone. Um, all right, up here we have where the origins. We have Ionia, Noxus, Void. So I thought Void was going to uh, not be there, but I was just wrong about that. Um, and I should have known that because there were some clips of Void units already out there, but Void is returning. Piltover is returning. So both of the pet classes are returning. Bilgewater, which is one that has been revealed to us for a while. Um, we have Demacia, Sharima, Zaun, Freljord, Ixtal is new, and Ixtal seems to be replacing um, Shadow Isles. Um, and one of them, one another one has to be gone because we have Bilgewater. Uh, so we have Targon, Darken, Reaver King, and Wanderer. Not River King, Reaver King. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but anyways, let's go through it. Let's look at the unit. So at Bastion, we have uh, Shin, uh, Casa Win. We have Alawi. So we were right about Alawi being a one cost. We have Poppy. Cassante, and we are right about this being a three cost of Nico, uh, Nico and our Targon boy. So a lot of these are pretty low cost. You can actually get four Targon, uh, or not four Targon, four Bastion early on into the game, much like in, in the current set. We have two one cost, uh, just like in the current set, uh, two cost, and then two three cost. Uh, so pretty easy to get this online early on into the game. That's cool. Um, and with the changes to items, the items rework, it's a lot easier to deal with Bastions because they are probably going to lower their resist amounts because they are lowering the amount of shred items. Um, so they should be easier to deal with even though they are a little bit easier to get online. Challengers, we have Irelia, Samira, uh, Kaisa, Fiora, which was already revealed to us. And then Nefiri, which I didn't know Nefiri was going to be a two or three cost. It's a two cost, we learned that today. And also um, we have Warwick as well. And then it shows Nefiri again. I guess it's just, oh, it's for the Darken. Okay, all right. And then over here with Sorks, we have Ari is returning. 
We have Big Daddy Swain, both of our Void guys are returning. Oriana's returning. Big Daddy Silco, Big Dicko mode right here. He is a Sork, so um, so he is going to be one of the premier AP carries. He does have su support mechanics in him as well, but I imagine he's one of the premier four, uh, AP carries now. Um, and then our boy Tarek as well. And then at the Bruiser line, Scion is returning. We have the two Void units. Our obviously Vi is returning for Piltover. Renekton is returning, and Sejuani is returning. So there is no changes to the Bruiser line. Uh, no changes at all. Interesting. Okay, at the Gunner, we have Jace is returning. We have uh, Graves. <laughs> we have Graves, uh, and we've already seen what Graves does. We have our Big Daddy Gangplank, which he summons the big ship. He is a Gunner, so it's going to be interesting how that works. Oh, because he can be backwind as well. Forgot he can be backwind. He can use his pistol or his sword. Um, we have Jinx, and then we have our boy Aphelios. He is now a gunner because Deadeye was a terrible trait. Um, okay, over here we have Invokers. We have Karma, Shin, Cassiopeia, all returners. Galio returner. Milio is new. Rise is still here. And we have um, Soraka as well. And so it's just a, uh, it's just uh it's just basically the same traits. It's ever we have a, another one cost. So it's actually gonna be really easy to get this online early because you have two one cost invokers and two two cost. So you could get four invoker very easily. Now you don't need a three cost drop from karma. That's interesting. Um, and then juggernaut, we have set Darius Nautilus is a juggernaut. Very cool. We, um, and then our other guys are the same returners here. So we do have Aatrox returning. Very cool. Vanquisher, which is a new trait, and we'll go down on the slide after we name off the guys. Jin is now a Vanquisher, not a Deadeye, because Deadeye is removed. And we have um, Zaya, which is our four cost, and we already seen what she does. She throws out some feathers and recalls them very quickly. It's kind of like a mixture of her ult and her Q and her E. It's not too crazy, but you guys can check out on the official TFT channel. They have clips of it going, going around already. Um, and we have Darius is a Vanquisher. Um, and we have uh nyla <laughs> sometimes it takes me a second looking at the portrait she is a vanquisher she's a four cost like we thought she'd be she is kind of like a replacement for gwen it seems like um and then we have ash is a vanquisher so she's not a gunner she's a vanquisher so that's interesting ash is no longer naturally going to pair with aphelios Interessant. and so let's see what vanquisher actually does so let's go down here um new vanquisher trait let's check it out vanquishers uh spells can critically strike Vanquisher, so it's kind of like, um, ah, I'm trying to think of it. It was a Zaya one in the past where she where she ulted into the air. Executioner, it's kind of like Executioner, right? Uh, Vanquishers gain a bonus critical strike chance and critical strike damage. So it's kind of like it's kind of like the same. I, I, I'm struggling to remember exactly what uh, that trait was like, but it's very similar to the old one. And then so here we are. Uh, these numbers will obviously change. So this is the crit chance and then the critical strike bonus damage. Uh, so this is interesting. We'll have to play test this to see exactly how we want to itemize and that sort of thing. Um, and then while we're down here, we can go ahead. Uh, I'll come back. I'll come back. I'll come back. I'll come back. We'll come back. Uh, okay. So let's check out some more. We got multicaster. Multicaster is the same as ever. We have TF. So TF is a two cost. We weren't sure if he was a one cost or a two cost. So he's a two cost. And then all the others are returners. They're the same, but notably Timo is not here. Um, so Timo is gone. He is gone zone. Uh, maybe somebody else is gone too. I don't play a lot of multicasters, uh, but I think it's just, yeah, it's just Timo, right? All right, rogue, uh, rogue. Graves is a rogue? Oh, cool. He's a gunner and a rogue. That's interesting. And so the new rogues, we have um, Zed is gone. Big Daddy Zed is gone. God bless. Nobody likes Zed, right? Am I right, fellas? Uh, anyways, uh, and we also have our Ixtal lady, Arkiana, is there. And then along with... Echo and Katarina will be returning. On Slayers, we have Big Daddy Mordekaiser is a Slayer. Very interesting. Um, and we have, ooh, Rek'Sai is a Slayer. Rek'Sai is a Slayer. Oh, okay. Okay, Rek'Sai, I see you. And we have Kale returning. And we have Quinn. Quinn, Quinn, very cool. Very cool, Quinn. Um, and then over here, we have Strategist. Strategist is, is Big Daddy Swain. MF is a strategist. Interesting. And I really thought, so I thought Gangplank was going to be a strategist considering he is a pirate captain, uh, but he is not, uh, he is not one. Is MF a pirate captain? I'm not sure if she's a captain. Is she, does she have that rank? She wears a captain's hat. I guess it does make sense. Uh, and then also we have Azir and um, 
and Jarvan returning. I knew Azir would be returning because Sharima was returning. You can't have Sharima without Sharima's Emperor, as well as I think that Nasher's Tooth item was created specifically for him in mind. So, and then we have Empress and Techno Genius. So let's go over the columns real quick. So a lot of a lot of things with Gleam from here, a lot of units that are missing, a lot of new units, right? Like Timo is missing, that sort of thing. Um, Zed is missing, right? But we still have Ionia, so I wonder what they're replacing the whole Ionia line with, but I guess we'll go through that. Ionia right here, so the Ionia line, oh, because they're going to have um, Ionia with Zaya. Zaya is from Ionia. She is of a Stian by lore. So very cool. All right, we have Shin, uh, Irelia, uh, Ari, Karma, Shin. Again, uh, <laughs> Set, Jin, and um, our girl right here. So who, uh, the only ones we're missing is Zed, right? Am I, or I might be missing somebody. Zed is missing, but that's about it. Zed is dead. Uh, he is not here. Okay, Noxus. Uh, Noxus, uh, we have our, the same ones right here. Is there anything new into Noxus? So Mordekaiser is new into Noxus, and we might be missing some folks. Uh, I'm not really sure. Um, cool. It's hard to know which ones are missing, you know, on the fly. On Void, we have any more Voids. No new Voids. Voids is the exact same line. Kind of bitch. Not going to lie. Void is already kind of boring. This should be a cool class, right? But I've always found Void to be boring. Pet classes are normally cool. And then Piltover has not changed at all. Bilgewater, uh, these are all new units. We already covered this in another video, but here are all the Bilgewater units if you want to look at it. Demacia, um, obviously Fiora is Demacian. Um, so she is replacing Lux. Lux is gone. So she is the four cost Demacian. Um, and then is uh, her, her sort class is being replaced by um, Big Daddy Silco, Big Dicko mode. So that's cool. Um, anything else changed? We have Quinn additionally added into our um, set up right here. I'm not sure if we're missing a three cost from the previous set. Just can't think right now. All right, Shuriman's. We have the new one is we have Nafiri. And then pretty much the rest of the line is very similar, right? Is this the same line as normal? Just this is the only change? Uh, we might be missing somebody. Oh, we're missing Akshan. No Akshan. So Akshan is gone, replaced by Nafiri. Also, something important to look at here, it's gonna be very easy to get three um, Sharima on very early on in the game because they're two two costs, two one costs. So it's gonna be very easy to get that without have, requiring a three cost drop. Very cool. All right, Zaun, we have Zeri and Urgot gone and only replaced with one. So it's gonna be, uh, right, we have we have Warwick, one, two, three, four. We only have four Zaun units now. So it's gonna be a lot harder to hit your six Zaun right? Um, we are missing those other four cost. I guess, look, well, actually we have one, two, three. We only have three Zown. It's going to be very hard to hit your, uh, to hit your vertical now. Um, and cool. We have Soko right there. And then Freljord only has two. There's only two, which is cool because every game when Freljord's meta isn't going to be three Freljord by default every game. You guys played a couple patches ago, a few patches ago, most of the patches this set, if you're playing Zeri or Aphelios, Boom, you run that, you run that shit every time. You don't, you turn off brain, run Freljord, unless you have Piltover opener. Now it's a little bit different because of the Bastion, of the Bastion comps being strong now and that sort of thing. But like, man, this was a real problem, this whole set. Three is extremely strong. Four was a bait um, and two just didn't do enough. So now with two, it's gonna be, make a lot more sense and they reduced how much shred and sundering matters. Uh, so two is going to be something that you play when it naturally fits in your board or you just somehow don't get any Shred or Sunder in your build. And then you'll do that or you'll play it, you'll force it into your build when you have the Freljord emblem. Uh, so I think this is a great, great, great change to Freljord because Freljord pisses me off to no end. Um, and so I'm happy that it's being changed. All right, Ixtal. We already talked about this one earlier today because this was officially revealed. And so we have the three units here being Milio, our girl Nico and uh, Kiana. On Targonians, it's the same Targonians we have before. Um, looks about the same. So same guys right here. Darkin is now a one and two piece. I think we do have a slide on this. So Nefiri and Aatrox. And I think we do have something talking about Darkin. So here is the Darkin update right here that Tanner posted. So Darkin, let's just read it. So Darkin one, Darkins are possessed by a weapon. When they die, the weapon passes to the nearest ally champion, possesses them, granting them the weapon's power. Like we already know. At two, the weapon's effects are stronger. We like that. They are stronger. Yes, yes. Um, okay, uh, and then Nefiri's. So let's look, she's gonna be after the holder. Um, cast their spell 
three pack mates attack the first enemy hit dealing some damage so her little doges will do some stuff very very cool um we like that um let's get back into it we're almost at the end reaver king i don't know what reaver king does i feel like they did they purposely made it sound like river king they had to have right uh, and then we have Rise over here. And then so we're going to go through a little bit of the rest of Tanner's thread here and check out what else we got going on. Uh, but right here, it is the Billy Billy test videos. And I will click on this. Hopefully these are full matches. If they're full matches, we'll live stream this bitch. We'll live stream, guys. And you check out the live stream. The link is in the bottom left of the corner. It's going to be in the pinned comment below. Make sure you click it. I will be begging in the comments for you to click it. I will be begging on my hands and knees. Uh, so make sure you check that out. Uh, and uh, hey, again, if you guys want to play with me, I will be playing next week doing viewer games so hey, hey, hey anyways all right uh new support items uh they're uncraftable and we already talked about this in another video but there are more support items than we didn't see before uh so let's click on these to see some more support items these are not craftable items we talked a lot about this in another video i'll leave uh end card videos where we talk more specifically about these i talked a lot more about them in other videos already so we're not going to go too into them but um these are some of the new support items so some of these i didn't know about until clicking on this image right now and that is i already knew about ages I did not know about Banshees, don't know what it does. I did not know about Crest of Cinders. Um, and these are these are not craftable. You can only get these from portals, augments, um, or from uh, drops from like Piltover, that sort of thing. Um, needlessly Large Gym, which is probably gonna be the same as it was before, but just on um, a support item. Obsidian Cleaver is no longer an Orn artifact because they are adding a lot of new Orn artifacts. Uh, Randowins, again, not an Orn artifact. Radiant Virtues in the game now interesting i wonder if it's gonna have a similar effect that it does in league which would be neat um shroud of still oh, we already know about this so, so these are all ones that we already know about right here i just wanted to talk about the ones that i didn't see before guys can you tell the caffeine is hitting right now i just had some kombucha and i'm feeling good let me tell you um okay so let's look at pillage water rise three this is just a funny thing um and then we have new updated emblem recipes so a lot going on here so bf is ionia that's what it was before, right? Yeah, okay. Rod is Zaun. You can make Zaun, which makes a lot of sense because they reduce the amount of Zaun units. So that makes sense. So you will be able to get to it easier. Um, Sork is tier. Okay, Bow is Chowder. Yes, Belt is Noxus. Yes, Armor is Juggernaut. This is the same. Cloak is Bilgewater. So Cloak used to be Demacia. Um, and then Glove is Vanquisher. So you can't make, which was Slayer before. So you can't make Slayer emblems. So let's contextualize this a little bit. You can't make Slayer emblems or Demacia. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the only way that you will hit the Demacia is if you get a uh, uh, Demacia emblem and you're on something like Placidium Library where you get another emblem for free. Uh, but anyways, guys, is this it for the thread? Let's check out more. Is there more in the thread? We already talked about Vanquisher. Um, we already talked about Ixtal um, in another video, but I just want to see the Ixtal effect. So electric, gain electric electric hexes that empowers allies placed within. The first time an enemy takes ability damage from each empowered unit, they are stunned. Oh, they are stunned. And this seems like something that will rotate from game to game. Yeah, it'll be different from game to game. That's how Tanner just wrote it in there. So adds a stun. Electric is a buck wild, brother. Um, stone, at the start of combat, empowered champions become immune to crowd control effects. Ooh. Um, and reduce damage. Ooh. Oh, wow. Reduce damage taken for eight seconds. And this does not have to be active on your Ixtal units. This can be active on whoever you put on that hex. So keep that in mind. Um, Okay, let's check out some more. What else we got? Wind. Gain wind hexes and empowers. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, empowered champions gain attack speed equal to 80% of their maximum mana for four seconds at the start of combat. Imagine Aphelios on this. His max mana is like 120 or 140. That's a lot. That's a lot. And he's going to gain a lot of attack speed, guys. That is crazy. Um, did I did I miss one? I missed one. Did I missed the flame one. Okay, here's the flame one. It just the image looked different. Okay, when an empowered champion deals ability damage, I've seen this one in the clip. They set them ablaze, dealing additional 30% of the damage dealt as magic damage over three seconds. So it does not apply a healing reduction. It just deals more damage. It's gonna be good with AP. I need to chill. It's gonna be good with AP units. Um, <laughs> it's gonna be good with AP units. I'm really excited, guys, and I'm on a lot of caffeine. So here is the Reaver King, not the River King, the Reaver King. Um, this is Gangplank's unique. So Reaver Kings use their Cutlass when put. Oh, this is this is how. Oh, this is his mechanic that makes him able to be front line and back line. We already know about this, but he can use his Cutlass when placed in the first row. He uses pistols when placed in the back two rows. Um, and then here is the GP item. So he can make some items. 
Um, the Cutlass gain 50 armor. Oh, this is, this is kind of like the effect. So Cutlass gain 50 armor uh, and magic resist. Attacks ignite the target dealing true damage. So it's true damage passive from League. Um, active, summon the Dreadway to sail. Oh, uh, so this is when he's frontline still. Okay. Um, this, is this not always his ability? I think this is always his ability though. Oh, it's just when he is the Cutlass, he gains this effect. And when he's on the backline, he gains range, um, which he does not need more effect because range, as Zabutin of the coach of Optic once said, range is just so OP. Uh, I don't know if anyone will get that deep cut. Anyways, active, summon the Dreadway to sail across the board, crashing into the first enemy hit, dealing some magic damage to three hex range allies. The Dreadway passes through or hit by are empowered by Citrus. Gaining 30% attack speed and immunity to carnage control. We did know about the immunity, but we did not know about the attack speed gain. So when you put him on backline, he is a powerful support unit. Put him on frontline, he can deal a lot more damage and be tanky. So it's going to be some flexibility whenever you put him on a board. Do you need frontline? Do you need Do you need this? Do you have items to put him on frontline? Do you have a BT? Do you have a Titans? Yeah. Can you do that? Is that acceptable? Do you have Sojin? Can you just put him on backline? So you're going to have to make that decision on what you need for your team. Do you have some AP items? We put them on backline. Anyways, um, guys, I am on one and we are having a good time, but man, a lot to lot being revealed. I'm very excited to play the new set next week. I hope you guys are too. And that was me covering the news. Come back tomorrow and we'll have some more. <laughs>